The first was Qutuz, a man of exceptional character who would earn the title Saif al-Din and he would become the face of the counter-Mongol movement. Born as Mahmud bin Mahmud into the illustrious Khawarezmain dynasty, Qutuz was forced to flee his homeland when the Mongols swept through Central Asia. After a harrowing journey, he found himself in Damascus. In a moment that would change the course of history, as a young boy, Qutuz revealed a ru'ya to his teacher during his Islamic studies. I will give you Egypt and its treasure, and I will break the Tatars, he proclaimed with absolute conviction. His teacher, unable to comprehend the audacity of this young boy, would respond, Are you crazy? But Qutuz stood firm and said, I saw the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, in a dream, and he told me that you would possess the Egyptian lands and defeat the Tatars. It was a bold claim, one that defied all reason and logic. The Tatars were known to be invincible and no one dared to stand up to them. Aside from what we've already mentioned above, to further exemplify this, Ibn al-Athir once reported, a Tatar man entered a district that contained a hundred men. He continued to kill them, one by one, until he eliminated them all. Nobody raised a finger to try to harm him. People were totally submissive and could not defend themselves to any extent whatsoever. We take refuge in Allah from such abasement. But Qutuz was different. He had a vision, a purpose, and strong faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This young boy dared to dream of the impossible, not just taking over Egypt, but also defeating the unconquerable. As if to fulfill the ru'ya, he would be sold off by a slave merchant to Cairo. While there, he would begin his Memluk training program that we have already mentioned earlier. Through sheer determination and unwavering faith, he worked his way up the ranks of the Mamluk training and proved his mettle in battle, even against the Seventh Crusade. And his big moment would come. In 1259 common era, Qutuz would become the Sultan of Egypt. It is unclear whether Qutuz remembered the dream or even the conversation he had with the Sheikh. However, when news arrived back in Damascus that Qutuz had become Sultan of Egypt, that very same Sheikh would remember the conversation, informing the soldiers nearby, yes, by Allah, he will take over the kingdom and defeat the Tatars. Quite remarkably, this man went from being a prince to a refugee to a slave and now a Sultan poised to make history and save the Ummah from the Mongol threat. However, he understood that in order to take on the Mongols, he needed all the help that he can get. On the 15th of Sha'ban, Qutuz gathered his men and the local rulers and inspired them with this following speech. O oh, princes of the Muslims, you have been eating the wealth of the treasury for a long time while you hate the invaders. As for me, I'm heading for Jihad, so whoever chooses to join me, come, and whoever does not can return home. Indeed, Allah is watching, and the sin of the massacred Muslim women will be on the necks 
of those who lag behind. Next, the Sultan descended with his troops to Gaza and stayed there for a day. He then travelled along the coast to the city of Akka, where the Franks were present at the time, and asked them to be neutral and swore to them that if any of them, whether a knight or a foot soldier, intended to harm the Muslim army, he would return and fight them before encountering the Tatars. As the Muslims came closer to the Mongols, he gave them one final speech. The chronicler al makrizi narrates its impact as the following. Qutuz ordered the princes to gather and urge them to fight against the Tatars, reminding them of the killing, enslavement and looting that occurred to the people of the provinces, and warning them of the punishment of Allah. They wept and agreed to make every effort to fight the Tatars and drive them out of the country. The Sultan then ordered General Babers to march with a group of soldiers until he met the Tatars vanguard. Upon engaging them in combat, Babers wrote back to Qutuz, informing him of this. In the meantime, he was advancing and retreating until the two armies reached the spring of Jalut, where the rest of the Mamluk army under Qutuz was hidden. It was then, on Friday, on the 25th day, during the last 10 days of the holy month of Ramadan, where the stage was set for a legendary battle that would decide the fate of Islam and the Ummah. On the 3rd of September 1260 Common Era, Babers and Qutuz led their troops southeast down the Jazeril Valley to launch their attack. Both demonstrated exceptional courage and leadership skills, standing firm against two massive Mongol charges that could have easily broken their ranks. At one point, the tides of battle turned against the Mamluk army, and they were struggling against the relentless Mongol onslaught. But Qutuz was not one to give up easily. He took off his helmet and got into the thick of things, famously shouting, Wa Islama! Wa Islama! Wa Islama! O Islam! Three times! Followed by, O oh Allah, help, help your servant Qutuz against the Tatars. His valiant act galvanized the troops and they fought on with renewed vigor. The Mamluks, trained to perfection, unleashed deadly long range attacks from their stationary horses that rendered the Mongols' hit-and-run horse archery tactics useless. With the Mongols faltering, the Mamluks seized the opportunity and charged into the enemy ranks, led by Qutuz himself. Just when the Mamluks were gaining the upper hand, the unthinkable happened. The Mongol force was hit by the desertion, allowing the Mamluk right flank to break through the void and attack the Mongol center. Babers would take advantage. His troops were able to break through the void and attack the Mongol center and Kutbuka would be captured and then killed. The Mongols were now leaderless and disoriented and as a result began to flee. Against all odds, the Mamluks had defeated the Mongols and the Ummah had new heroes.
Qutuz would then pray two rak'ah to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sadly, Qutuz, who would earn the title the line of Ain Julut, would not live long after. Tensions would reignite between he and Babers, and Qutuz would be assassinated by the Mamluk Bahriya faction. <laughs> 